Hello everyone, this is Dave Corinth and welcome to my shop. Today, I'm gonna to show you how I make the Stanley tote, or the handle. Which one is it? Um, I say tote, and people are gonna say it's not really a tote, it's a handle. If I say handle, they're one of these. So if you caught my last video, I showed you how to make one of these. This is my tote making jig, or really my tote drilling jig. What it allows me to do is drill the main hole for a tote at various angles using these blocks, keeping my drill press flat and not having to tilt the table. So today we're gonna to use this jig and we're gonna make one from scratch for a Stanley plane. This being a number five, uh, type nine all the way up to type 20. So let's get started. So I've already determined that I'm gonna make this tote. And this is off of a Stanley number no. five type 11 made from 1910 to 1918. And it's Brazilian rosewood. Now I don't have any Brazilian rosewood right now. So what I wanna do is I wanna make this one out of walnut, but this walnut is kind of special. This particular piece of walnut came from a tree that was cut down in 1944 on my great grandfather's farm here in Williamson County, Illinois by German POWs. The POWs were being held in Anna and they were lent out to farmers to help with farm work since most of the boys were off fighting with the Germans and the Japanese. So my grandfather had this tree cut down and it was a big tree because I've already built myself a bed, a dresser, a couple of nightstands, a coffee table. I've made some other stuff with it for relatives and I have some scrap pieces left over. And that's what we're gonna make this tote out of today. So first thing we wanna do is I wanna lay it out on this piece of walnut. It should be noted that the stock should be 15 16 of an inch. Now I plane these down to 0.95, so this one is a little bit thicker than 15 16 And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my template. This is a template that I made to trace these out. And all I'm gonna do, and you can see here, there's kind of a streak here. This little, I don't know what that is. It's not the part of the pith, but it's some kind of little defect there. I like that kind of stuff. So I'm gonna put this one right over the top of that, keeping the bottom parallel. And then I'm gonna trace it out. And I don't have to trace these out perfect because I can cut it out a little bit strong. It's not gonna hurt a thing. So next I wanna cut this out on my bandsaw. And while it looks like I was being wasteful by only marking one tote on that piece of walnut, I was able to mark six of them on that. But I'm only showing the one being cut out here that we're gonna to make today. And you can see it sticks out past this template a little bit. So I wasn't carried away with cutting it out because it doesn't need to be. Now that I have the template attached to my stock, I'm gonna use this bit, which is a variable roundover bit from Lee Valley, to shape these sides, both at the same time. And if you've never seen one of these bits, they are nice. It has a bearing on top, and it has the exact profile to fit a tote. So when you push this in here, the bearing will ride along the top of the template and cut out this profile all in one pass. And these are from Lee Valley, and they are worth every penny of it. If you don't have one of these, you can use a router bit, but you'll have to do some hand shaping as well. This makes it a lot faster. Now, if you'll notice, I have a handle on top of that. And that's to keep my fingers away from that spinning router bit. I can't even imagine what it would be like to get my fingers in there. The next thing I want to do is I want to take this off of my blank. And you can see there is that blank. Now it does have this sticking up a little bit, but that's okay because that's actually going to help me round this over. Stanley totes are not flat. They are rounded all the way across. So that's actually there for a reason. The next thing I want to do is I want to trace this template on there, which is the exact template that was used to cut it out. Only it has the bottom and the top of the tote marked as well. So I'm just gonna trace this on there. And 
and then we're going to cut this out on the bandsaw. Now I'm not cutting it right on that pencil line. I'm actually going to take it up to that pencil line on my disc sander. So after I sanded it, the next thing I want to do is I want to locate where the holes are going to go in and out. And I kind of jumped the gun and went ahead and marked it. I forgot to hit record, but basically what I did was I found the center here and I found the center on the bottom. This is where the hole will come out. To get the hole for the front, all I do is take a piece of a Stanley Plain tote, which this came off a of Type 11. I simply line it up with the bottom of this and then trace it out. And then circle that hole. That's where that hole will get drilled, and then this will just get removed on the end. Now, the top of this sets it three quarters of an inch from the toe, or I guess the tip, as you might call it, right there. So the hole for here will get drilled right there. So the next thing I want to do is I actually want to locate where this rod is going to go through the tote. And I do that by first transferring this mark over to the side. And since I still have a flat side on the tote, all I have to do is mark it and mark it here on the top. And then what I'm going to do, since I've already got this set up at 27 degrees, I'm just going to transfer that line down like so. And if I did it right, that should be five eighths of an inch where that transfers over. And let's see if it does. And I'm just looking at this pencil mark. I'm not even worried about that, but as you can see, it's perfect. So you can see there's the line going over comes where the rod's going to come up, it meets up with that. So we're in good shape to set this one in the jig now. So now I'm ready for the jig, and the jig already has the 27 degree block in it. You can see right there, it says 27 degrees. So all I'm going to do is take the tote, the blank, set it in there, and I'm going to push down on it until it hits the tabletop, or my workbench top. Once it does that, I know this is touching there. I just lightly tighten her down. You don't have to crank this down a bunch, but you do need to keep constantly checking to make sure that it hasn't gotten out of whack. And you can see there's no gap here. This is not protruding past. Uh, right there, see, that's perfect. And then there's no gap up here. So now we're ready to drill. First, I drill the hole for the barrel nut, and I use a 7 16 Forstner bit to do this, going down one half inch. I'll then swap that out for the 5 16 Brad Point drill bit. I don't use a standard twist bit here. They will wander as you go down into that hole. Brad Point drill bits are a lot less likely to wander. And as you can see, once I drill the top hole, I simply flip that jig around to drill the hole at the bottom the rest of the way through. So as you can see, I have the 7 16 hole here, the 5 16 main bore, it comes in the top, comes out the bottom, perfectly centered. And if I put something behind it to contrast, like this paper towel, and if I lean this forward, you can see that hole is almost perfect. Just as good as Stanley ever did right down the center still got some crumbs in there and sawdust but we'll clean that out so the hard part's over and it sure is easier to get this thing apart now i don't have to have a wrench so the next thing i want to do is i want to drill this hole and i got to go back to my drill press over there and put this in that vise perfectly level and drill that hole out and for this hole, I'm using the same bit that I used to drill the main board, a 5 16 Brad Point bit. I'd take it easy on this. You don't want to go all the way through real fast. 
So because I use that brad point drill bit, it actually cut a leading edge on it. So when it comes out the top, it doesn't chip out much. It'll chip out sometimes a little bit, but on these Stanley totes, that's going to get removed. So that's not going to hurt anything. So that's the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and trim that off. And I do this on a disc sander. I don't have a template made for it. I just do each one of them by eyesight. I've yet to see two totes that had the exact same flat spot on the toe. And to shape that curve on the toe, I use this belt sander. And I do the same thing for the horn. So now you can see our tote is almost done. It has the correct profile. It has the holes drilled in the right spot. And we're just about ready to sand this thing down, put some finish on it. There's one less thing we have to address. And that is this top hole. We drilled this top hole at 7 16 because the barrel nut is 7 16 and so is a waste nut. The problem is that if I put this barrel nut in there, it won't go. That's actually very tight. I would have to force that down. And if you've ever taken an old plane apart, sometimes this barrel nut is very difficult to get out. There's also the waist nut. The waist nut is designed to go in a little bit easier because the bottom on most of them is a hair bit thinner than the top. But when you get to the top, it sticks again. This is 7 16 and this is 7 16 but the interference is just a little bit much. So what I've decided to do is I have started to ream all of them out. This is a 29 64 reamer, which is 1 64th larger than 7 16 And all I do is put this on the end of a drill, and drill straight down into that, and it opens it up just enough so that the barrel nut or the waist nut fit perfectly. The reamer will also allow me to deepen that hole for the barrel nut if it's not deep enough. So now it's ready to sand, and I use this little one inch drum sander that I picked up from Lee Valley. And I do this on my drill press. It has a foam backing, which allows it to contour to the curves and shapes on this tote. And it fits nice and snug in all these little round corners. And I use 220 grit sandpaper to do this. Now I used to do these by hand. But since I acquired this little one inch drum sander, it makes the process a lot faster and I get a better result. Now, if you'll notice, I'm wearing gloves. As I've gotten older, sometimes these darker hardwoods, especially the exotic stuff like Cocobolo, Purple Heart, Rosewood, things like that really irritate my skin. Walnut's not so bad, but just to be safe, I still do this. Now it's ready to hand sand. So when I hand sand these, I use 220 grit sandpaper going with the grain as much as possible. I also like to soften up all those sharp edges and corners, make it easier to hold in your hand. And if you'll notice, I'm not wearing gloves now. That's because I kind of want to feel the wood as I'm sanding it. I use my fingers to check to make sure every little spot's perfectly smooth. If I have gloves on, I can't feel that. And once I'm done hand sanding, I go over the entire tote with this 4 hot steel wool. It really polishes it up. And for the finish on these, I use lacquer. I'll apply three or four thin coats 
I don't want a very thick layer of lacquer on this. I kind of like to be able to see that wood grain and feel it in my hands. When I'm done, I'll sit it on this rack and let it dry. So I've let the tote dry for a couple of hours, and now it's time to polish it up. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hit it with some 4 out steel wool. And of course that leaves the finish kind of dull. Next I want to go ahead and polish it with a cotton cloth. You can see it's starting to look really good. But the last thing I want to do, and I'm pretty sure you can guess what that is because there's a Johnson's Pace Wax can right in the corner there, is I'm going to apply one coat of Johnson's Paste Wax. And that'll give it a nice sheen. I don't want this thing super shiny, but I want it to look nice. Now is to see if the tote will fit on the plane. The first thing I do is I attach that small toe screw. I don't tighten it down, but I set it in place. Next, I go ahead and attach the main rod. And you can see it slides back as I tighten it up. Once I get it where I want it, I'll tighten the front toe screw and then secure the tote all the way down. Then I'll set the iron back in along with the lever cap and then I'll try to wiggle the handle and make sure she's firm. Comment, like, and subscribe if you like this video. And I'll make more. I hope this video was helpful if you decide you want to make a tote or two for your planes. Thank you for watching.